We are CVDPN, the Coachella Valley Disaster Preparedness Network. We are a nonprofit 501c3 whose mission is to provide training, education, and networking to help prepare the residents of the Coachella Valley for man made and natural disasters. The purpose of this presentation is to address the primary threat in the Coachella Valley, and that is earthquakes. In particular, the long awaited mega quake that is, according to some, well overdue. The information presented here was obtained from governmental and expert sources, but instead what is widely accepted as the likelihood of the quake and the outcome. A list of those resources are shown on the credits at the end of this film clip. We all know that earthquakes are unpredictable, and when they do occur, they can cause a little or a great deal of damage and destruction. Predicting the amount of damage is a science in itself. It depends on a number of factors. The quality of construction, the soil on which the construction is located, and the proximity to the epicenter of the quake, among other factors. Here are some comparisons that you should keep in mind as we proceed. In 1985, a quake of magnitude 8.0 erupted 250 miles west of Mexico City and lasted for three minutes. In 1989, an earthquake erupted 70 miles south of San Francisco and impacted the entire Bay Area. It was a magnitude of 6.9 and lasted 10 to 15 seconds. In 1994, a quake erupted in the San Fernando Valley 20 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles. It was dubbed the Northridge Earthquake. The magnitude was 6.7 and it lasted 7 seconds. At this point, your question should be, what are you going to do to help save the lives of yourself and your family? Do you have a plan? We hear a lot of excuses why people don't have a plan. For example, it's not going to happen in my lifetime, and if it does, I'll just get in my car and drive someplace else. We think you should reconsider that. Dr. Dennis Maletti was the director of the Natural Hazard Center at the University of Colorado in Boulder. What follows is an excerpt from a presentation he made about the mega earthquake in the Coachella Valley. And the U.S. Geological Survey. Here are the shaking intensities for Riverside County in this earthquake. Now what you can see when you view this, the line, that tiny little thin thing, and it should be a thick, wide red thing, is going to cut Riverside County in half. Notice everything to the left of the San Andreas Fault, it says is the Pacific Plate, and it's going to move 20 to 40 feet to the north. Notice everything to the right, the North American Plate, is going to stay right where it is. Remember when I told you I-10 crosses the fault in two places? What that means is if you're driving east or if you're driving west out of the Coachella Valley, eventually you'll see a spot where the lane in front of you is suddenly 20 or 40 feet in the wrong place. A USGS report cited the Coachella Valley because of its location on the top of the San Andreas Fault is likely to experience a mega earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 and according to Dr. Lucille Jones a duration of three minutes. It is supposed to start at the edge of the Salton Sea in the south and extend to Lake Hughes northwest of Palmdale in the north. According to Dr. Maletti this earthquake will impact everything within a hundred miles of the fault line. Another excuse we often hear is that we'll be fine. There'll be EMTs and FEMA will come to our aid. This is the process after an earthquake. When the shaking stops, assessment of the damages is done by the homeowners and communities. This is communicated to the emergency departments of each municipality, who in turn convey the information to the county emergency department. Once the data is gathered, they share the information with the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. The governor makes the decision about declaring an emergency. At that point, the United States government, FEMA, will be involved. 
In response to the disaster, the allocation of resources and assistance would be delegated to the worst first. For Coachella Valley, that will be larger population centers like Los Angeles and high-rise buildings where hundreds of people are concentrated. As for local emergency responders and hospitals, it will be difficult for local EMTs to respond, rubble on the road, overwhelming requests for assistance. Hospitals have stated that they will begin evacuating their own patients to prepare for triage of local residents. All of this is going to take the better part of a week, most likely. Dr. Lucille Jones is one of the foremost seismologists in the United States. This is an excerpt from an interview a few years ago. And afterwards, we'll have lost all of the aqueducts coming into Southern California. We'll have broken enough pipes in the ground that's going to take six months to get water back into all our houses. We'll lose electricity. 1,800 dead, but uh, 300,000 buildings badly damaged. Uh, you can have enough to be able to drink for a few days. Um, and then, you know, FEMA's going to probably be, you know, bringing it into us. But do you want to go stand in line to wait for your water? Would you rather have it at home? Uh, so we say, however much water you've been storing, why don't you just get some more? Now, when is this earthquake, our earthquake, going to happen? Nobody knows when. Our fault is 10 months pregnant. It's locked, loaded, and ready to roll. Oh, it's going to happen soon, but maybe not for a few decades, but it could happen today. Thanks a lot. Now, why are they concerned? It's earthquake history. There's the boundary between the Pacific and North American fault we know as the San Andreas. The northern section is shown by the 1906 earthquake. There was movement in 1857, 7.9, a little north of the San Fernando Valley. The last one here was in the year 1680. The bottom line is, our quake happens every 150 years. That's every two human lifetimes. That's four lifetimes ago. That's why seismologists are so concerned. Probably one of the most common excuses is it's just too complicated, I don't have the time, I don't have the money. So, we're here to tell you, it's not that hard, it's not that expensive. Here are some things you can do that will cost you very little or nothing at all. Please keep in mind, this is just a start. There is much more to do after these first steps. But you've got to start somewhere. Our online handbook is a website and a complete resource guide for where to go to find out how much you need, what you need, where to learn more. The long and the short of it is, start now, before it's too late. The fact is, you are your own first responder. Learn the best way to shelter during a quake. Drop, cover, and hold on. Prepare an evacuation plan for your family. Set up an outside contact in advance so that if and when you can get through to them, you all have a common point of contact. Make copies of your critical documents and store them in a safe place. You're going to need those for claims afterwards. As Dr. Jones mentioned, storing water is critical. You can buy it, you can bottle it, you can get a 55-gallon barrel. Fill it full of water, put some preservative in it, and it will stay drinkable for five years. Learn how to purify water. Put together go bags, clothing, food, medicine, things you would need if you had to head outside and stay outside for a while, if you are required to do so. Have at least 10 days food supply for you, your family, and your pets. You can start buying canned goods and stash them away. If you live in an apartment or assisted living, at least have peanut butter and power bars and water on hand. Put together or buy first aid kits for your home and your car. Keep your car at least half full of gas. And have some emergency supplies in case you find yourself stranded on a highway that's impassable or stopped by a traffic accident. Emergency responders will be overwhelmed at the onset after a disaster. In advance, locally, or online, there are courses at no cost to teach you first aid, use of an AED, how to stop bleeding. An incredibly valuable training tool is to take a CERT class, Community Emergency Response Team. You will learn the proper way to triage if you have to, search and rescue, 
and a host more vital skill, and stash some cash. It is highly likely that the power will be out. Therefore, there will be no ATMs from which to withdraw, and credit cards will not work. Take a look around you in your home and decide what you can do to make your home a little more quake-proof. If two minutes of shaking is enough to collapse highways, think about your furniture dancing around the room, falling on your bed, jumping off the wall, cupboards opening, dishes crashing. There are remedies for all of these. Choose one thing to do this month to become better prepared. The number of resources available to give you the information you need to decide what needs to be done and what priority it is, is up to you, and we have them available for you. The Coachella Valley Disaster Preparedness Network is dedicated to the ideal of no community left behind. We want everyone to have the opportunity to learn, prepare, and survive any disaster.